Right, before this video begins, I'd like to apologise for the delay in getting this video out. In my last video, I explained I explained why this video has been delayed. So, go check that video out if, you're one, if you want to know why this VHS review has been delayed. Anyway guys, welcome back to, v to VHS Reviews. This is the series where I take VHSs, what I watch them with you guys, give my thoughts and comments on them, and then at the end I tell you whether or not they're worth buying. And so, guys, for the seventh episode of VHS Reviews, we're going to be watching this Tugs VHS. Now, if you don't know about this show, it was created by the same people who made the first two seasons of Thomas the Tank Engine, and it was produced at the same studio. So this, I believe this is the third v VH, Tugs VHS that was released, and as you can see it contains three episodes of the series. Each episode is about 15 minutes long. So yeah. Unfortunately, though, only 13 episodes were ever made of Tugs, which I think is a real shame, because this is such a great show. A second season was planned, however, due to financial issues, it never came to fruition. So, yeah, today we're going to be watching this Tugs VHS. So yeah, three episodes on here. This is the front. This is the back. Trapped Ghosts and High Winds. Released in 1989, shortly after it was first broadcast on TV. Yeah, created by the same people. So the music has also been done by the same people who did the Thomas music. Yep, created by the same people for TVS. And it has a released in 1989, and it has a running time of approximately 45 minutes. So, sit back, relax, go and get some snacks and a drink, maybe. Because this video is going to be about 50 to 55 minutes long. That's how long this tape is. This is the tape. The front of the tape. Here's the back of the tape, and I shall now turn my TV on, and I'm now going to go right ahead and put the tape into my VHS player, and I shall now fasten my camera onto the camera stand, and then we'll get straight into this review. We should be okay now. Ah, oh, here we are. It's starting up now. Copyright now, blah blah blah. Copyright, copyright and crap. Ah, oh, this. Yeah, this is the Castle Vision logo. And I believe Castle Vision would eventually become Castle Home Video, who released some of the other Jimbo. Who released some of the other, some other children's VHSs, including a Jimbo and the Jet Set one, which we reviewed in episode 5. Anyway, here's the intro. So, as you can see, it has a great intro. It's such a memorable intro, and it's been. and it's been. and it's been. Remade several times for, for other shows, including Red Cliff Railway Tales, which I have done. This, I used this style of intro for, um, for the second season of Red Cliff Railway Tales, in case you haven't noticed. Yeah. So as you can see, it has it has great a great theme song and great music. 
the same people who did the music for Thomas did the music for this. Look at it. It looks wonderful, doesn't it? Right, here we go, first episode. With times, believe it or not, when the StarTugs and Z-Stacks took on a big job together. One of those times I remember was when timber and tanning bark had to be brought down from the sawmills upriver. Here we go. And this year, it was especially important that we so, work together. So this show... It, but Zog was making heavy going of towing an old hulk on its I think this has I think this has great models and sets. It has great voice acting. Great great lighting. Great it looks really, really good. Really good. Uh, it clearly has much higher production value than the first two seasons of Thomas the Tank Engine because it has better models, great music, and it and it's got voice actors, and also the episodes are longer. So this must have had a much higher budget than the first two episodes and the first two seasons of Thomas the Tank Engine. Why an alligator tug? Well, you can see he's just as low in the water. <laughs> and in this case, just as dangerous. Look who's here. It's Shoe Pack, the alligator tug. Nah, that's Billy Shoe Pack. I quite like that character. No thanks. Oh, and I forgot to mention that this episode, Trapped, is my second favourite episode of the series behind munitions. It has a has such a great has such a great story this one and a great moral uh, so this is my second favorite one behind munitions munitions is without a doubt my favorite episode and the favorite of many fat of many tugs fans for obvious reasons there are so many explosions in munitions is obviously the name there are some great explosions in it. In fact, those explosions are on a Thunderbirds level. Yeah, if you haven't seen Thunderbirds, the explosions in in the episode Munitions are are as good as as the explosions seen in Thunderbirds. And speaking of Thunderbirds, that's probably going to be the next episode of my of my series. That's probably I'm probably going to review a Thunderbirds VHS for the next one. So you see, the current's very strong against him, so so they can't go, so they can't, so Doug can't go that too fast. So because they were able to do explosion, there's also an explosion in this one, but it's not as good as the um as the one seen in munitions. The fact that they were able to use explosions as well, along with all these voice actors and and making the episodes longer and the better models and things, it's very obvious that this had a much higher production budget than the first two um, seasons of Thomas. Oh dear, Zod pushed too hard and now they're trapped. Up river. Now because this show is so similar to Thomas, and each character has similar personalities, a lot of Thomas fans have compared, have compared the characters of have compared the characters of Tugs to the characters of Thomas. It's commonly accepted that Ten Cents is the equivalent of Thomas and Sunshine is the equivalent of Percy, which I can agree with. However, it's from that point where there's conflicting ideas as to who else is who. But here's what I think. I say that Top Hat is the equivalent of James, Big Mac is the equivalent of Gordon, Warrior is the equivalent of Henry, Hercules is the equivalent of Edward, and OJ is the equivalent of Toby. Now, if you don't understand, so the Z Stacks and the Star Tugs are like the steam and diesel engines. Both companies are competing with each other to provide services around the big city ports. Well, 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 well. Uh, hello, uh, uh, 
So, and I, so, and I see, and I see Zoran as the equivalent of Diesel. So the Star Tugs are the um, are the steam engine. The Z Stacks are the equivalent of the Diesels. I don't know who the other Z Stacks represent though, but I, but Zoran is definitely Diesel. And Captain Star is is the equivalent of the Fat Controller. He leads the Star Tugs, and the um, and the Z Stacks boss is Captain Zero. Going down river because the current's going down river, the the tide's rising on that side and it's going down on that side. Oh, I say hello! Oh yes, oh I say yes. That's pretty. Top hat can be pretty funny sometimes, especially he has. Not only can the uh, can all the tugs move their heads, unlike Thomas, as well as their eyes. Top hat has the added bonus of being able to stretch his neck up. And I remember watching a Tugs YouTube poop, I can't remember what it was called, but I remember watching a Tugs YouTube poop where Top Hat stretched his neck right up into the clouds. I can't remember what it's called, but if you can, can find it, then, then go and watch it. It's so funny, that YouTube poop, but I can't remember what it's Three or four ah, uh, battering man. Wow. There we logs already. Then we get behind them and ram mm. the tramp up. Great orgy. Yeah. My work. Well, let's try it. Well, I'll try anything. However, I'm like. Back down, let's spill. Ten cents farm, little churn. The A frame crane. Ah, crane. Hi, Leon Oh, yes. Not all the characters have um, have faces. Not all the characters have faces. Some some of them, such as the cranes, speak through megaphones. In the mo so all the floating cranes speak through megaphones. And the most famous of all, the most famous crane of all in the um in in Tugs is called Big Mickey. He's a huge dock side crane who works at the munitions port. But, it, but unfortunately, in the episode Munitions, he was, um, 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 unfortunately, in the episode Munitions, he was knocked into the water by all the explosions, and he drowned, and he drowned and sunk to the bottom, which was sad. So essentially, we saw a character die on screen in that episode. The stars could only hope that help would come soon, though they never expected what sunshine brought yeah. So essentially, it's very sad that that Big Mickey was um, went went into the water. But um, there is some evidence that um, Tugs and Thomas the Tank Engine take place in the same universe. Because Big Mickey the Crane appears at Brendan Docks in future Thomas episodes. Oh, because they used the battering ram to dent the rusty tramper, but uh, they, they've made um, so, they've made um, Billy Shoe Pack's job easier. So, uh, we can't move this on our own. Come back here. 
So as I was saying, Big Mickey does appear in future Thomas episodes, and even in the CGI series he appears. when Big Mickey was brought to Brendan Docks, assuming that Thomas and Tugs take place in the same universe. What probably happened was, they found Big Mickey, they fished him out, they took him to Brendan Docks, and they repaired him at Brendan Docks and put him back up again, and then he, um, and then he went back into service. Forget it, ten cents. No way Frank's gonna ship that an inch. Ready for the big spectacular? Oh no. A crane might not move that, but dynamite will, as you'll see. Spoiler alert. <laughs> oh no. Oh, oh god, something's gonna happen. Zorin deliberately trapped them. After me, you fool! Oh god, here we go. Explosions. Oh god. All the current, all the water. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And if you notice, I've noticed that the music is also done in the same style as that scene, as that scene in Thomas, in Thomas, um, in Thomas the Tank Engine season three onwards. Oh look, Zorin got stuck there. So although there is some evidence that Thomas and Tugs take place in the same universe, what do I think about that? Well, I really can't decide if, it, if they take place in the same universe. Yes, there is evidence for that, but there's also evidence that it doesn't take place in the same universe. The se some of the same rolling stock for the trains is used in top it, from Thomas the Tank Engine seasons 1 and 2 is used in Tugs, so that is some more evidence. But the fact that the trains puffer, for example, one of the steam trains in Tugs doesn't have a face, makes it seem like the answer is actually no. Oh, here's the outro music to Tugs. That's the end of this episode. Yes. Never mind him. What about me? In trouble, Zoran. Looks like you got crushed instead of little ditcher. <laughs> the only thing Zoran succeeded in doing yes. was trapping himself instead of the star times. Yes, you shouldn't trap other people. Right, we don't need to see the these credits. So anyway, the um, although there is evidence for their for for Thomas and Tugs taking place in the same universe, and there's also evidence for that not being the case. I really can't decide whether whether t whether or not Thomas and Tugs take place in the same universe. I just don't know. Right, here we go. Second episode two on this VHS. None of us like fog, but in those days it was worse. Tugs had no radio, no radar. Apparently, this show is apparently is is supposed to take place in the 1920s. In um. I remember in, um, quite late. In, in the big city port in the 1920s. Old sea stories, I'm really not sure, I'm really not too sure though. As he the buildings, they seem to take on Mist, mist, made by ghosts. This episode is essentially about, um, the tugs going, the tugs going mental in fog. Oh, for God's sake. Wake up! Wake up! Sorry guys, sorry about this. Stupid thing. So 
sorry about this guys. Guys, I might have to cut the camera and try and fix this. Sorry guys, I'm going to have to cut the camera and just... Okay guys, sorry about that. I had a few problems just then, as you saw. Anyway, let's continue. So as I was saying, um, as, mu as much as there's evidence that Thomas and Tugs do take place in the same universe, and evidence that it does not, I really can't decide. Yeah, that's my opinion on it. shapes of moored boats and trampers, trying to make sure the ghost tugs weren't following him. Yeah, ghost tugs. That's he the was story so back at the Stardog. Oh, ghost tugs. You're no better than yeah. the Father Dead Raid of Knots. You all right, Chulos? Have you seen a ghost? Oh, I, I, well, I saw something. I, 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 no, I can't tell you. You only laugh. Well, no, oh, look, come on. We weren't even serious. Well, I have seen ghosts. What? <laughs> You've seen what? Ghosts. You know, Scuttlebutt's story about those thugs I sank in the Great Storm of 1912. I think that was a, supposed to be a, a Titanic now, reference, you know, 1912 sinking. Reference eye, eh? to the Titanic. Uh, well, I'm not going out there again to the Fogolifts. <laughs> well, I never thought I'd hear that. Very mysterious. Well, he, he could have seen something. There could be ghosts. You never know. Tom Hat is a very funny character. Ah, oh, it's the next day. You shouldn't have told the Majesty you it. Don't mind them, the fog plays funny tricks on us. Nothing really to worry about. As long as you mind what you're doing, keep your wits about you. But go spit back. What nonsense. That evening, Warrior was making his way back to port. Some troopers were following, using him as a guide through the fog. Ah, oh, yes. Of hey, Warrior! You sure you know your way? Oh, so I do. Do you trust me, don't you? A bit of fog's nothing to worry about. I've got a natural sense of direction. If we were running into anything, I'd know. Yeah, Warrior does is is a very is a very witty. He's he's the dumb one. I can clearly see why he's um. I can clearly see that he is um Henry. Why he's the equivalent of Henry in this. Um, the shrimpers have um. Yeah. That's Gomez, he's one of the trampers. He's, 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 he's a Mexican one, he's from Mexico. And for some reason the trampers have to pay to go have to pay to get themselves towed. But how exactly do they do that? Do they have like money? Like a, a, a giant wallet or something? I don't I don't exactly why know why he's um why they have to pay. Oh my god, that Mexican accent is so stereotypical. You'll be worth more as scrap. Oh for God's sake, Zoran. Yeah, but why do why do they have to pay? That is it. I will get him one day. Anyway, with luck there should be a few distress calls today. Suckers always pay at least double to get a man trouble. Ghosts. He 
Space Big Mac's ghost fleet. Oh no! They can't oh, get me! The ghosts! Oh, Why is he whispering? Oh, lads, don't touch me! Don't touch me! Or I'll report you for, 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 for harassment. So I get a report you for physical harassment. Why is that Mexican accent so stereotypical? That ghost tug slid silently into the fog. Then suddenly, so shaken, he sailed round in a circle, then met Izzy again. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's you. I've not got far, have you? Amigo, give me a toll. I pay what you want, any price you say. No, Izzy, my old friend. I'll tell you information. Why do they pay? Why do they have to pay? Why does he have to pay? OJ returned from escorting two yeah, train steamers out of the Simpson. Tired and still or OJ from In Hamlet Insanity. <laughs> Some of you probably don't know what I'm talking about when I say those things. Of course it did. The fog. They're all going mental from it. It's your mum. Maybe it was just ten cents um, painted white. I don't think. So. I don't. I'm not quite sure, but I think it's so. Ah, oh, to wiggle. Yes, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. She can't be too far away now. Is that? Is that the ice cream? It can't be, can it? Oh, I don't like it. Ten cents. What's happening? No, I know. It's weird. is the scariest part of the episode actually. Even I was a little frightened by this when I first watched it. This is quite scary, this part. Oh, it's, it's a galleon. Yes, the galleon. But then look what happens. Even I was a little frightened by this at first. Oh, more visual effects and explosions. Oh god, they're really scared. Exp 
explosions. Bow down to me, I am your god. That face didn't scare me that much, but like, I'm, oh, that much, all that must have been done with cell animation. The lightning must have been done with cell animation. Oh, that face kind of scared me when I first watched it. It was, um, yeah, this is quite creepy, and I bet when, when the children first watched this, they would, they must have been terrified by this scene. Some of it, some of it was clearly done with sound animation. It must have been, yeah, it must have been, yeah, yeah, it must have scared quite a few kids when they were younger. It even slightly creeped me out when I first watched this. Oh yes, oh yes. There's also Grampus, the submarine. He originally belonged to to the navy, but he was about when he was about to be scrapped. He was bought by Captain Star, and now he's part of the submarine people. He's number eight in the, in, in the fleet, and all the other um all the other Star Tugs have numbers as well. And also, when Grampus comes out of the water, I'm sure you saw this, but he also spits water out and it sometimes hits some people, some um, some other tugs. As you see, it sprayed Top Hat in the face. But I think another time, he also sprayed Blue Nose in the face. Blue Nose is a... It, is a, is a high, is a war, is a naval tug with a high wartime attitude who barks orders at everyone, even even when they are not under his jurisdiction. I don't think it should be. Ah, oh, Hercules knows what's going on. Of course, Hercules would know what's going on. With engines off, listening for cracking ice. There was a wooden galleon frozen in this iceberg, which must have melted in our warmer water. That's why you saw the old vessel bob up to the surface. <laughs> I doubt you saw Neptune, sunshine. He's for fairy tales. You've let the fog get to you, my dears. <laughs> of course he did. Behind you. And that's your ghostly galleon. They watched with embarrassment. Oh, oh goodness me. A rotting galleon. So, but luckily... Balloon, as I was saying, luckily Blue Nose got what was coming to him in munitions because he was the one who caused all those explosions. Oh yeah, they went mad from the farm. Oh for God's sake, where's the... Here it is. So the um, so Blue Nose, so Blue Nose got towed away and he, and he was either scrapped or he might have been scrapped. Luckily, so he definitely got what he deserved though after the episode munitions because he was the one who caused the. So he got what he deserved when he barked orders at everyone, even when they weren't under his jurisdiction. Right, here we go. Last episode on this VHS, High Winds. Ah, oh, that's Johnny Cuba. He's an Australian gangster. We were worrying about the high winds coming. Tug work would be difficult. Hey, Dan, Dan. The Great Dawn, eh? Yeah, don't be fooled by appearances, Sunshine. You know what Captain Star says? Red sky at night, sailor's delight. Red sky in the morning, sailor's warning. Oh, yeah. Of course, rules of thumb. Strong winds on the way. Yeah, that's what Ted said. Oh. Get a move on, you two. The storm flags are out. Oh, oh yes. We're just seeing okay. them. Okay. Get on with it. Hercules is already out answering a bad day. When you deliver that oil, bring in Skipper Buck Pete. He's dredging in the bay. Aye, aye, sir. Yeah, we're off now. Sir, why do they call him Sir? He's not in charge. Captain Star is. Come on, sunshine. No time for daydreaming. No, me. Let's a go. Good morning, Zebedee. What's good about it? I wins underway. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of work to do today. Oh, hey, what's going on? He's cut right across us. Uh, yeah, well, that's not nice. Come on, come on. Boy, come on. Hey, come on, <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah. He likes to show he's as strong as any Z-Stacks tug. Oh, look. Look, he's losing one. Oh, dear. He's lost one. You think we better tell him? Yeah, he hasn't seen it. I suppose we should. Boy, Zebedee! I first, it's my right of way, you'll have to wait. Yeah, oh, what's going to say, you Zebedee? Don't be mean. Oh, me. Yeah, don't worry, I'll hold it until you secure it. Don't 
interfere, I demand. Oh, for God's sake, Zabini, he's only trying to help. There's no need for any of that. Do it your own way, then. Wait, hold it for me, will you? Thanks. Oh, that's um, that's um, a gangster. Oh, I like this music from from Michael Donald Jr. Campbell. Ahoy there, Custom. Custom. Customs inspection. You are within port limits. I'm coming aboard. Hey. No. Watch out, what you're Johnny Cuba says otherwise. Zebedee was out, as he'd been told, looking for ships or steamers, even fishing boats that might need a tow. Anything that might keep his captain zero. Johnny <laughs> Cuba. Oh dear. Well, well, well. Captain Xerox, little silly. Hello, Johnny. I mean, Mr. Cuba. Uh, good eye. Nice to see you. Listen, uh, do something for me. Do uh, Slip me into the harbor so I'm not breaking the law, right? I'll see you all right. Why on earth would you be breaking the law? How no, come no in the Thomas universe, universe engines can't break the law? Well, okay, there was that one time when Thomas ran into trouble with the police. But. But how come it's a lot rules are how come how come how come the tugs have to obey the law a lot more strictly than the than the trains do in Thomas? I don't quite understand that. To turn to the old docks that haven't been used for years, where he'd arranged to meet his criminal friends. Criminal friends? Why are they criminals? Oh come on, Johnny! Stop! Oh, for God's sake, Jolly! Jolly Cuba's a bit of a dick, to be honest. Yes, sir. You can clearly see that Johnny's a bit of a dick. And don't try anything fancy, or you'll find yourself at the bottom of the harbour with some mint in your hold. Oh! Jesus Christ! Jolly Cuba is really a situation. Jolly Cuba would sink him if he didn't help him. And because of something that happened years ago between those two, he knew Captain Zero would sink him if he did. So, he couldn't go and tell the captain, could he? While Zebedee was trying to work this out, oh, he saw the two star switches out That's in the bay, struggling with scuttlebutt feet. And <laughs> Paul. All the high winds, they're struggling to move that crane in the winds. If only I could fix one more line. Guy, Zebedee, give us a hand. Sorry, can't stop it. Not the chance to. Now just hold him steady while I get another line of ball, that's all. Why should I? Well, because we're in trouble, that's why. And you must want to look bad. Right, just this one, but don't tell Captain Zero. Oh, that's it. Thanks, Zebedee. That's just what we're here. Not a weird scum, but... Oh, white transitions like that are actually quite rare in the Tug series. That's quite a nice gem. I'll slip him away one barge of coal for Johnny Cuba. I thought I was the only one stuck with coal deliveries to do. Oh dear, poor Zebedee, I actually kind of feel sympathetic for him, having to do all of that stuff. It's just so he doesn't sound. Yeah, mate. Long as you're back here tonight, okay? No worries. 
I really quite like some of the whistles, Warriors whistle in particular, and I also like Jelly Shoe Pack's whistle, well as some of the other whistles. Puffer's whistle is quite nice as well, Puffer the Steam Train. And Top Hat's whistle, Ten Cent's whistle, Grandpa's whistle, Sun Train's whistle, I like all those whistles. Oh yeah, the Princess Alice is coming into port. Oh, I love this music. Mike O'Donnell and Junior Campbell did a great job with the Thomas music and the Tugs music. This was made by a lot of the same people who did the Thomas music, and it was made in the same studio as I explained before. All the customs officers stranded. Coast Guard. It wasn't his lucky day. Zebedee had enough on his deck as it was, but he couldn't ignore someone in trouble. Of course not. Never thought I'd be glad to see you, Zebedee. What? Oh dear, how is a coast guard getting this mess? Johnny Cuba pushed me into the rocks. My engine's dead. I yep, need a definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Johnny Cuba's Cuba. definitely a dead. Don't play dumb with me. I hear Zero and Johnny are good buddies. Oh, not anymore. That couple of weeks. So you do know him? Hey. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, no, no way. Oh, I just come out here to see if a ship might need a tow, you know, with these winds and that's that. Uh, salvage is what you're after. Well, you'll get something if you get me into port, I'm sure. Yeah, you need repairs. Take you to Lucky's yard. Oh, yeah, Lucky is the, um, is the guy who loves the, the boat repair yard. He's Mac, but yeah. Good day to you, Coast Guard. Nothing serious, oh, yeah. so. Chasing a crook and salvage uh, by Joe Pencil. Oh, you'll survive it. My guess is you've taken that gangster somewhere, Zebedee. Come on, I'm not. Where? All I did was bring him in past the harbour bar. I said I had to let him go because I reacted to him. Where he went after that, I don't know. I've a good mind to run you in for questioning. You wait till Captain Zero hears about it. He won't like it, you know that. I do, I do. Sometimes I get for rescuing you. No, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be out there answering distress calls. Oh, for goodness sake, oh, poor Zelding. He's under so much pressure at the moment. You prick. Ought to be a goody goody start, I would you? Hey, I haven't finished yet. Zelding, come back here. Start oh, the Princess Alice. <laughs> don't add more weight to his pressure, Zoran. Please don't. Oh, the Princess Alice coming in. The liner. That looks very, very similar to the Titanic, doesn't it? business for tugs, especially with cross currents and the danger of this high wind. Usually the liner can assist, but the Princess Alice couldn't do much due to the damage to her rudder. With all their expertise and experience, the Star Tug team were finding her very difficult to keep under their control. Oh no, she's going off course. I love, I love oh my god, I love the danger. I love the Tug's danger theme. It's pretty much the most, like, it's, it's the most iconic, this, the danger theme is the most iconic piece of music in the whole series, besides the intro. Every, every Tugs fan knows the danger theme, and it's so good. It's suspenseful, it's, it really sets up the mood of danger. Great, all oh, tipping over. Ah, oh, Zemini's coming to help, of course, even though he's got loads more pressure on his side. He's got... Everyone needs a hand from time to time, even if they are your enemy. Even if the person helping you is your enemy. Yeah. Oh, 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 it's Hercules! 
Hello, what's going on here? Oh, yes, Ebony. And where are you taking our friend, the well-known Johnny Cuba, eh? Oh, oh no. Well, uh, yeah, um, what's it to you, star? We know you, Johnny Cuba. Up to no good. We'll hand him over to the authorities, Zebedee. They may like to have a word with him. No, oh, you don't. yeah. Lord yeah, that's, that's brought Johnny Cuba to justice. For him, that's what he gets for being a dick, being handed over to the authority, even though for some reason in the Thomas well universe, done, Zebedee, the, Come on, let's take the steam trains can't oh, face the same punishment for some reason. Yes, they can. See? Yeah, the winds have died down now and it's sunset. Oh my god, that is such a beautiful scene. The safe, yeah, the sets in this are so much better. As I said, much higher production value than Thomas the Tank Engine. That's so much more beautiful than anything you could see in Thomas the Tank Engine. Yeah, not bad, was it? Now you were right. The Captain Zero's over the moon. Now Johnny Cuba can't get at him. Yeah, thanks for helping yes. me scuttle that poop. But I don't quite know what it was that that, that Zebedee doesn't doesn't like that would have made Zebedee sink him if he found out that he was helping Johnny Cuba. I've had enough troubles today. Well, I see you fellas, eh? Oh, Zebedee, if you ever think of leaving the Z stacks. What? You crazy? Today was today, okay? No more. Okay. No, he ain't gonna be joining the Star Tugs anytime soon. Much as they were. But Zebedee showed that everyone must have a good streak in them somewhere. Even Z Stacks. Yes, even Z Stacks. I bet even Johnny Q with the Dick had a bit of good in him somewhere. And I think even the most evil people on the planet and every evil person in fiction does have some good in them somewhere. It's just very, very hard for those villains to bring the good out. I 100% agree with what the narrator just said. Right, guys, so that's the end of this VHS. I hope you all enjoyed watching it with me. And now, guys, I'm going to let you all hear the nostalgic sound of a VHS rewinding. Hang on, let me fast forward it. Right, any second now. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Here we go, it's rewinding now. Right. Yeah, that sound is pretty nostalgic. Even if you haven't, you were never born in the era of VHSs. I'm sure that sound, that must be, a, that is a pretty nostalgic sound. Come on, hurry up! And when it comes out, there'll be a, a tiny bit of tape left on the right hand. Um, on the right hand, I don't know what the two wheels inside the a VHS tape that cause that that allows the VHS to play. I don't know what those two wheels are called, but on the right hand, play, play, okay, I'm going to call them playing wheels from now on. On the right hand playing wheel, whenever I take a VHS out after watching it, there's always a bit of tape left on top, and because of my OCD, I need to make sure that that tape is gone, meaning I'll need to rewind it a bit more. Yeah. Come on. You done yet? Right, come on out then. No, oh yeah, and I need to make sure that bit, that the tiny bit of tape is gone. So rewind it a little bit more. Should be gone now. Right, come on out then. There we go. Now make sure it's gone.
I think that satisfies my needs. So I'll now um, put this VHS tape away. Oh God, come on. Ah, God damn it. Sorry guys, I'm, tr I'm trying to close it. Here we go. Right, there we go. And that's the end of that video. So yeah guys, Tugs is an amazing show and I think you should all go and watch it if you some more episodes if you've never heard it because it is an amazing show, especially the episode Munitions. Best episode of the show in my opinion. So, without a doubt, definitely go watch some more episodes of Tugs and buy this VHS if you can find it on the internet. This VHS is definitely worth buying if you've got a VHS player. So yeah, this was a great video to make. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Please like this video, comment on it, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to me, TrainLover16, if you haven't already. So once again, guys, great VHS to make. Really enjoyed this video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Make sure you go watch some more episodes of Tugs and buy this VHS because it is worth buying. Thanks again for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you all in the next video. Bye bye everyone.